Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, and the topic of the day is multidimensionality. We're going to start with a 15 minute meditation. So, why don't we just relax, quiet our minds by simply inverting our attention and those of you who've been with me before, you know the drill. You just, without putting much effort into it, uh, you simply take a deep breath, center yourself, and bring your attention back to the source of yourself. Turning your attention inwards instead of putting your attention on the other world, noises that you hear, emotions that you're experiencing, thoughts you're hearing, you're simply turning your attention to the source of yourself, where everything comes from within yourself. Your thoughts, your emotions, where do they come from? You bring your attention to where they come from. And naturally, your mind goes into silence and you become quiet. So, just relax into this. Don't try too hard. And allow the meditation to come. Meditation is a natural state that happens to all of us. And we have experienced it uh, without any formal training throughout our lives, especially when we're younger, children experience it more than adults because adults do get conditioned. So we're simply going back into our childhood, being childlike and allowing meditation to take over. So again, take a deep breath and relax and sink in within yourself. Allow your mind to do its thing. Don't force yourself to stop your mind. Simply remain in this place of an observer, allowing thoughts to pass through your mind. Emotions come and go, your physical sensations, they're still there. Your senses are working. You can still hear the outside noises. And just stay in this place of being alert, aware, and here. And naturally, a phenomena will take over. A deeper state of being reveals itself. You begin to feel expanded and become aware of a deeper connection.
slowly, slowly come back. Okay, so the topic of um, this academy is multidimensionality, and what what does it mean to be a multidimensional um, person, being? That's what Rosalie has asked, and uh, she's heard me saying it and mentioning it in different times. Um, basically we can um there's different ways you can look at it but what i mean by being a multi-dimensional being being a multi-dimensional person is uh number one is that if you look at yourself and the kind of things and different hats that you're capable of wearing in different times. For example, um, I use myself. On one level, I'm a spiritual teacher, so that's one hat I wear. On the other hand, I'm I'm a healer. On the other hand, uh, I'm an employer, and I have my employees working for me and then uh, in the same time then I could be an employee and when I'm hired of uh, putting a retreat together or I'm doing a workshop I'm working for people or I'm doing a private coaching session so now I'm serving I'm working working for someone else so now you wear a different hat Uh, i'm also a son and uh to my mother so then i'm someone else Uh, in the past i was in insurance industry and i had an insurance uh, agency and so that was a different hat i wore Um, so if you look at yourself and you can see that some of you, you, be, you may be a grandma, you may be a mom, um, you have children, grandchildren, you're married, your wife, your husband. So different times, maybe your career, you're a nurse working in a hospital, you're a school teacher, you're a yoga teacher, whatever you do. And in different environments, you shape shift and you become somebody else you're wearing a different hat so this is what i'm refer- referring to by being a multi-dimensional uh, being now you can also look at it uh, simultaneously as you are here in third dimension and You have a body, you have your mind, you have your emotions, you have your bodily needs, physical needs, but in in the meantime, your soul, your higher self is, does reside in different dimensions. And you have a connection to all dimensions simultaneously. And that's where you're deriving your information is or when you're dreaming you travel to another dimension 
And if you pay attention, you, wanna, you want to go back into your life and take a look that there are moments in your life that you literally will find yourself in a, another dimension. Now, when we're talking about other dimensions, again, everything's got layers, layer, layer, layer. And I'm going to explain all these things to you. So you can, for example, say another dimension, such as a dimension of light. Like when we're doing the work together and you're in meditation, deep meditation, there are times that you... Well, you may experience that you're completely gone and you lose all kinds of senses of your body and you just experience that you, you are pure light. So in that, in that moment, you have shifted. You have shifted into this dimension of light and you've become light then your awareness eventually comes back to your physical body and slowly you come back and you pick up form and you become who you are in this form again. Then you may be in a situation that you're experiencing tantric, tantra, tantric sexuality, and you dissolve into your partner and you lose all kinds of senses of your physical boundaries or an idea of who you are into the oneness. So that is one shift into a different dimension. You, some people have ex done experiments on psychedelics, and right now there's a big movement around the world, a lot of people doing um, medicine uh, journeys, and they're experiencing shifting dimensions through medicines. But um, these are all uh, different ways that triggers us to shapeshift and go into a different dimension. And we, what we do here, basically, uh, we're doing it through meditation and the type of work we do. Shifting our consciousness into different levels whether you may be questioning yourself, such as, who am I? You may be challenging yourself. And you begin to go inwards and peeling the onion by layer and layer, going deeper within yourself and examining the truth of who you are by removing layer, layers, okay, of I give you an example. For instance, you may say, okay, I'm not my name. I can change my name at any time to a different name. I can change my last name. I can change my nationality. I can move to a different country and uh, change my nationality. I can change my religion. Um, I can change my hair color. And today's technology allows you that you can change your sex. You can implant things. So you can, when you're working on yourself and you're pulling out each layer of defining you as a certain person and you begin to pull that layer out, so I'm not my name, I'm not my last name, I am not my nationality that I've been given, I'm not the religion that they have put this label on me as I was born um, by my family or society or tribe, 
and you start pulling these things out and you go deeper within yourself and you start to change. You begin to see different aspects of yourself. Similarly, you can, once you, you begin to examine yourself and look at it, awareness comes, consciousness takes over, and you can just look at your multidimensional uh, characters. That how your character changes in different environments and with different people. You may not have the same type of behavior you have when you are spending time with your elders. If you're with your parents, you may be somebody else. And then you're hanging out with your high school friends or your peers or your college, and then you become somebody else. Your behavior changes and you're acting differently you may be dress dress up differently uh you may go to a festival and you pick up a character and you dress up as a pirate or a spaceman or whatever and uh and you just pick up this persona and then you become someone else um when you're playing around with your children, you will become somebody else. And you may, what about when you're talking to your dog or a baby? Why do people, their language changes, the tone of voice. When you're talking to a baby, you don't talk to a baby the way you and I talk to each other. All of a sudden you're like, oh, would you, would you, would you, would you, oh, would you, would you, would you, would you. All of a sudden your voice changes and you are speaking what we may call baby language. And then uh, you may be doing the same thing with your cat or your dog. So you shift, you shift to someone else. And uh, sometimes you may be spending time with certain friends or family members or your partner and you haven't seen this other part of them and uh, they've been hiding it from you or they're embarrassed to show it to you or you've never been in a certain situation with them to see this part of them to come out and then all of a sudden you start to see this other aspect of them and it may be surprising to you because you've never seen it before. So they shift to this other person. You can also see and observe yourself in stressful situations or in an emergency event that all of a sudden you may be shifting into this very powerful character and uh, taking over of the situation all of a sudden uh, you're you're with a bunch of people something happened and maybe everyone is falling apart and they go into a panic and all of a sudden this other aspect of you comes out and it's very strong powerful calm and collected and this leader comes out of you and you're leading the group and dictating what to do to each person in order to handle and uh, take control of the situation so you may shift to this other person You can, um, Rosalie, I have a question. Hold on a second. Let me unmute you. Okay, go ahead. When I get the message that remember who you are, 
you are a multidimensional person and go out and remember who you are. And all I see thing left with is when all was gone and I think, who am I? Right. That's the question right. I see thing left with. Yes. Who am I? Right. Well, who am I? That's a very good question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's where I'm sitting. That's a that's that's a good one, and we will talk about that one uh, and get into it in another academy deeper. But I mean, okay, we can talk about this a little bit. Like, yeah, who who are you really? I mean, how do you uh, define yourself? How uh, you know, uh, some, a lot of people, maybe they think they're, they may have never thought about this or never paid any attention to this, to this part of themselves. And they may just be perceiving themselves basically as one dimensional being, you know, I'm a dad or I'm an engineer and, uh, just perceiving themselves as one thing. But for me, as I just keep examining myself, I've discovered so many different aspects of myself. And uh, let's see, hold on a second. Can you unmute Rosalie, please? Um, like observing yourself, you look back at yourself and then you just see, um, these different things that come out. For example, last year I was remodeling my cottage and my office and um, all of a sudden the carpenter Zaratustra came out. And uh, at, in the beginning my good friend Christian, um, who's got all the equipment, he's my next door neighbor, he's my landlord, and uh, he just showed me a couple of things. Um, we'll cup we'll, with carpentry. But then this other part came out and I started to do some amazing things, cutting wood, um, starting to uh, staining it, uh, making cabinetry, doing all kinds of things that in so, it felt very, very natural doing it. But in the meantime, it was interesting to see this other aspect of myself because I have not done anything like that for a long time. Uh, part of it was I wasn't in the environment. I didn't have the equipment or maybe I didn't have any interest to do it or I had no idea I can do it. But then all of a sudden I see myself being able to do, being very creative, uh, doing things. Um, then you look at another aspect of yourself, uh, all of a sudden you may be very good with uh, sewing um, or creating or, or designing clothing. And uh, you, you maybe go to a fabric store, you buy a bunch of, that has happened to me uh, a few times, being in India, being in Brazil, being in Bali, uh, I'm always gravitated towards um, fabric stores. And I buy fabric, different kind of fabrics. And then I find Taylor and uh, I start designing clothing and I show them what I want to do. And uh, I start making clothes, making pants, making shirts, experimenting with them. And uh, some of them come out really nice, some don't. But then all of a sudden, the um, cloth clothing designer Zaratustra comes out. And it's another aspect of yourself you begin to see. Or um, I go in the kitchen and sometimes maybe I'm somewhere at the friends or 
in a situation there isn't much food in a refrigerator or whatever but you know we got a little bit of this and that and i just go open up different cabinets in the in the kitchen and i find things a little bit of this a little bit of that and i start cooking and all of a sudden this amazing dish will come out and uh it's surprising like how in the world did you come up with this with very little material but this other the chef Zaratustra will come out and yeah it, it's not like I I'm like to be cooking all the time and spend a lot of time in the kitchen doing that but you just get to see these if you're not defining yourself and limiting yourself to one thing that I am only this and that's all it is if you open yourself and expand your boundaries then you allow your multidimensional self to be free and expresses itself i've experienced that with video making uh being in front of the camera um and in past few years i experienced with being in a um music studio when we baram g and i we created uh my first um album uh you are who you're lo looking for which i will be putting it out soon i uh, got to experience and observe myself that all of a sudden how much i really enjoyed being in a music studio and uh being a part of the whole process and wanting to create uh and never thought about this uh because i didn't grow up with uh musical instruments i didn't grow up in an environment that i was not encouraged to sing or or use any kind of musical instruments um it just was never part of my childhood um uh thing or being in that sort of environment and then all of a sudden uh i get exposed to it and this other part comes out so um if you truly look back at yourself look back at your life at different stages that you grew up and be open with an open mind you begin to discover that there's all these different aspects of yourself that are that you're made out of from the world that you're perceiving the physical world to the inner world inner realms that you begin to discover your multidimensionality of your own self which is very very exciting very enlightening and it opens up um infinite possibilities because by the recognition of this aspect this part of yourself by recognizing it and acknowledging it you will be it will bring tremendous amount of excitement in your life i don't care at what age you are all of a sudden it will open this world that wow um i want to learn a new language i want to learn a new craft well, whatever that is or I want to develop something i already know but take it to the next level so you have opened the gateway to 
possibilities of all these multidimensional uh, self, uh, multidimensionality part of yourself, all the things that you're capable of doing. And maybe you've done it, and then you shut yourself down, and now you're opening up to it again. Or maybe you've never done it, but they're all there. And you're opening yourself to it. Anybody has any questions? You can either write it on the chat box or you can raise your hand. Um, I'll be happy to unmute you. I'll tell you another thing is like, it, it has happened to me, um, like there, there has been different periods that it looks like a gateway, something has opened up and all of a sudden it's like information is pouring in, pouring in, like words are pouring in and I've been, writing, poetry, um, literature, words of wisdom, and they just come out and you start writing. And that's how basically I created um, Lightning Notes of Zarathustra. Um, that's how it was born. I started to write things on Facebook as spiritual quotes uh, every day, every other day, sharing with people, but it was just coming from my heart. And then, uh, you know, I had maybe 40 or 50 writings, and uh, uh, one of my fans through Facebook contacted me, and she uh, mentioned she wanted to have lunch together, so we meet for lunch, and she, she she's a, a children's... Um, She's an author of children's books. And uh, she said, Zarathustra, you realize uh, that you have enough writings that you can make a book out of it. And at that point, I had not even considered that. And I didn't even think about it. So I, you know, go back home, open up the computer and go through all my writings in Facebook. And I realized I have like 48, 49 writings. And uh, anyway, I, brought, I wrote, uh, when I printed uh, Lightning Notes of Zarathustra, I ended up with 99 writings. So, uh, but it was like, wow, I have enough content that I can put it to print. So all of a sudden, um, a book is being born. I'm sure you have it here. Lightning notes of Zarathustra. So that this is what I'm talking about being a multidimensional um, being, and you're capable, and you do that already of wearing different hats, and you pick up a, a different persona in different situations in your life. But it's already built inside you and you've done it. And you're still doing it. It's just bringing the awareness to it and, and recognizing it. And being open to that recognition of all these different aspects of yourself and not limiting yourself to one thing that I'm only this thing because that's very boring how would life be when I look at it if I can't learn anymore and if I cannot express myself. I'll tell you something funny. Yesterday, I, I was driving 
I had to go back and forth, you know, when I'm driving in LA. Um, and sometimes I spend two hours, two and a half hours in the traffic. Uh, that's how life is in Los Angeles. And I listened to five different spiritual teachers or five different speakers. So from motivational speaking to just a diehard spiritual stuff. And I loved it. And, you know, I may be listening to somebody for five, ten minutes. Maybe I get to a point like, I, I, you know, then my attention's not there anymore. Uh, I pick up whatever I, I'm, I'm meant to pick up from them, learn something, certain way of whatever they're explaining, whichever area they go into, and then, then I may move on to something else. And I, I love the fact that internet, YouTube, podcast gives me this uh, opportunity to listen to other people. And there is so much out there. It's amazing. There's so many great teachers, so many different ways of expressing their teachings that it's like, why, would I, why wouldn't I want to listen to them? Why would I want to just limit myself and be closed to one way of teaching or one way of looking at things? Or just saying to myself, oh, I'm doing this and I, I don't need to listen to anyone else. Oh, every, everybody is my teacher. And, uh, and it's such a wonderful opportunity to learn from them of how they're expressing themselves, what they're, how they're seeing life, what is their point of view in spirituality, um, the way they're, they're looking at it. I may not agree with it, but really enjoy um, checking out other people and, and learning from them. It makes my job a lot easier. All right, Miss Rosalie, let me see. Yeah, oh. I have talked with a lot of people, and many of them say age is only a number, but most of them are afraid to be old. What do they fear? Is it better to die young and to, to take one day today and, and like that? I don't know what they fear to be, be old. So let me see if I understand. You're asking me a question, right? Yeah. That okay. people, they talk about that age is on their number. That's experience, you age. But they say they are afraid to be old. Afraid to be old. Yeah. What do you fear? Is it better to die young? <laughs> I mean, I love my age. Life okay. is amazing. Well, I, I like to view getting, as you're getting older, you're putting some numbers on and getting seasoned. And uh, I, I honestly, from... Uh, very young age, I never believed in age. From childhood, I never believed in age. To me, age was always a number. And then to this day, I still feel the same way. Now, I, I will be lying to you if I tell you I don't see the effects of putting out years on my body and I don't see the changes. Of course I do. And uh, 
I don't have the same body as I had 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago. And uh, that, that part is very, very clear. Um, and it's undeniable. But your body can be aging. That's, of course, is a natural process. But your heart is young. That's the part that I feel is going, it's, it's what's going on with, I can only speak of myself. And that's how it's, I feel it will be all the way to the last breath that I take on this physical plane is that I would never want to stop playing. I would never, never want to uh, not be childlike. Childish is different than childlike. And playfulness or be able to dance and or to go hiking and exercising and just being open to new things and uh, adjusting and adapting to whatever life brings and not being really set on a certain kind of ideas of this is the only way and there's no other way and I'm not open to it. So in reference to what we're talking about is as long as your heart is young, then it doesn't matter. The body does whatever it needs to do. And uh, your heart is young and you're open and you're really um, enjoying every moment of life. And of course, every moment of life, it's always, it's not going to be there, there. When we're talking about every moment of life, yeah, there's many, many moments in life that things don't go your way. And uh, you may be going through some kind of pain of whatever, loss, emotional pains, uh, failure, uh, physical pain, whatever it is. So, but when your heart's open, you, you allow things to come through and pass through you. You don't have these ideas of how things def should be. And if they're not that way, I'm going to suffer. So then you become very liquid and very flexible with whatever life throws at you. Sometimes it's the good stuff. Sometimes it's the bad stuff. But you're open. And they just go through you, basically. And that's also a part of being a multidimensional being. That flexibility, that shape shifting that you have created or you've allowed yourself to become. That this aspect, this is a very good conversation a topic that we picked up today. And because this, if you, you understand, if one person understands what we're talking about and the entire, the concept of it, then if you look back, a, a lot of different enlightened beings, a lot of masters, free beings that visited on this planet, they referred to this. They refer to, maybe they use different kind of language, wording, but they were pointing out, like Osho, when we talk about being multidimensional being, it always uh, uh, makes me think of one of my spiritual teachers, Osho. Uh, when Osho talks about Zorba the Buddha, be like Zorba the Buddha. And uh, I don't know how many of you know about Zorba. Um, no? Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Praga. 
Hi. Hi. <laughs> you, you, you know Zorba the Buddha. <laughs> yes, I know. But right now I'm also experiencing quite intense times. <laughs> yeah. Not only celebrating. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, that's a part of life. And uh, that it's not always celebration. You know, I mean, maybe we call it the good times. <laughs> it's the recognition that the uh, living in third dimension is a, it's a part of the package. It's, always, it's not always going to be going the direction you want it to go. It's, it has ups and downs. And, uh, and recognizing that and allowing that, that it's okay. Not being, being stuck on this idea that if, you, if you're enlightened or if you're a highly evolved being, you shouldn't have ups and downs, life's ups and downs. It should always be fun and party. And that's not true because that's not what, what we experience. If you don't experience it, then it's just a concept. It, it's not your reality. The reality of this life, this dimension, it, it has ups and downs. You go through different periods. You go through periods that, excuse me, I need to wait for this plane to pass. <laughs> yeah, you, we, you go through periods that um, your body may get sick and you're going through a period of health issues. Now this may go on for six months or a year or two or whatever. It's, how do you deal with it? How do you perceive it? The way you deal with it and the way you perceive it is the difference. Because that's something out of your control. And there's nothing you can do about it. You're, somehow your body got sick. And it, it slows you down and it forces you to deal with it. Maybe your home, hormonal balance has changed. Uh, something happened. Uh, whatever, you got a virus, you got a disease, there's a malfunction. Who knows? All, all kinds of things happen. So sometimes it's a physical thing. Sometimes events happen. Uh, we got in a car accident and you got disabled. And now you have to go through a couple years of rehabilitation it's not party time you know your arms not working your mouth is like this you can't eat you can process things you need help you have to keep working on on your body that's part of life that can happen to anybody an enlightened being or or not so what we do is most of us, we beat ourselves up about that if I'm living life and if I'm a highly evolved being, I shouldn't go through ups and downs of life. And that's an idea that we have. But ups and downs of life are for everybody. I don't care if you evolve or not. It's how you perceive it. That's the difference. You allow what is going on. You see it, that's a part of the function of totality that now things are not going your way and everything seems like a struggle. Can you stay into it? Can you just write it and maintain 
your level of awareness to be just simply aware of what is happening or you're going to identify with a certain idea of how it should be versus how it is. It shouldn't be this way. Why is this happening to me? I'm being punished by God. I probably have not done my spiritual work. I wouldn't be going through what I'm going through. So something's wrong with me. Or instead of simply being aware, the awareness is here of the ups and downs of life. And being in this place of acceptance, accepting it and not beating ourselves up. One moment, please. I need to get my Instagram going again. I'll be right with you. Okay. Um, I have you unmuted. Okay. <laughs> um, I. What's really difficult right now is like that I can't define it. It's so overwhelming that I pick up um, a lot of intensity. Okay. And, um, yeah, it makes me cry. And even, I, but I can't say like I'm wrong or this is happening or it's, it seems to be nothing. <laughs> and yeah. at the same time, it's pretty intense. So I'm not sleeping very well right now. I'm aware of it. And, uh, yeah, it's a challenge to just uh, maintain my day, let's say. And uh, sometimes I can't do it the way I uh, think I should do it, but right. I I can allow that. Yeah, so it's not right. that I can't, but it's like today it was so strong that I really felt like, wow, oh, I would not like to live any longer. And this was really right. strong. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Not yeah. to get identified when you come to this level of thoughts, yeah? Right. Well, it's, you know, that's, I, first of all, I appreciate your honesty that you share, you share this with, with us, especially saying this part that today you felt like uh, there were moments that you feel like you maybe you don't want to continue living any longer. And I have, let me tell you this, you will be amazed that you're not the only person. I know. <laughs> this thought goes through their mind. You know? Yeah, I know that it's like, you know, it's, um, how, how should I say, it's like, I'm, I would say like my life is in a level where it's really desirable for many people. And it's like that this thought, uh, what I feel is like, I know that that are not my thoughts, but I'm aware of them. And in this intensity, sometimes I cannot, um, yeah, I experience me in the oneness of it. And it's, it's, it's challenging. Yeah. Okay, tell me about this part you just mentioned in this intensity about the oneness. Say that again. Uh, yeah, in, in the intensity when I feel that it's like I feel there is no connection. And I, ha I know this over the years that uh, oftentimes I feel others in my surroundings stronger than what I, I would say like I feel me yeah, as a person. So, and when I'm connected in this, what everybody in my surrounding or in the collective is feeling is like, uh, nature helps me a lot to um, just feel something else <laughs> or to uh, have 
possibility to, uh, yeah, right. let's say, like to share this intensity with somebody. But it's very hard to speak with somebody about it because it's like then it soon starts to get personal while it is not personal. Right, I understand. I, I, I'm, um, well, and the experience is personal. Yes, that's true. Yeah, but it's like uh, all the issues where you could say, like, uh, um, put your focus here, or put your focus there. If you have your focus up there, right. Yeah, and it's, yeah. At, at moments it feels like it's impossible. Yeah, or let's say overwhelming when you said it's like you're listening in the car to um, uh, these teachings, and I also like to do that, but in this moment everything is too much for me. It's like, okay. no more input, please. <laughs> right, exactly, I get it. I, I understand completely. Well, the... What I experienced is when this is happening, what you're going through right now, and it's like you're in a, a pressure cooker, as if they put you in this pressure cooker and they, you know, the <laughs> water there, it's steaming and you have the top on and it's locked up and the pressure is getting stronger and stronger and it's really cooking. And and there's no way out. It appears to be that way, right? Yeah, let's say it's like I feel my connection to everything is open, but it's like I don't feel the others um, feel me in that. Yeah, let's say like that. Okay. Right. I feel I feel funnily disconnected while I'm connected, and and this is so weird. I understand that. I get it. So how about if I tell you that is totally normal too? I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You 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 cannot not be connected. You are connected. Yeah. You're connected, you're connected at all times. You know that because because you've tapped into the juice. So now what happens is the appearance of connection is not there. The, the senses, they may not be sensing the connection, but they're sensing something else. And this even sense, sensing disconnected, it is a part of the connection because how can you sense your how can you feel you're disconnected? You have to be feeling it. So the feelings are there. The senses are there. Even in these moments of feeling being disconnected. So you know, what is happening with you is perfect. It's perfect. It's, it's perfect in this way. And I'm going to explain this to you and maybe this is of any help to you or not i don't know but i'll just share it with you is that it i i understand exactly what you're saying and there's like this thing is like kind of or it's like it's ripping you off from inside out it's like you're being torn it's, and uh and while it's happening in 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 this pressure part of it that it's everything is like about to explode or it's like ah this thing <laughs> there is one element is not touched no matter what is happening no matter how much it feels like it's disconnected or it's connected one thing in the midst of all of it doesn't change. And that's the beauty of it. And that one thing is the ability to be aware of disconnection or connection, the ability that you have 
that you are aware of the intensity. There is tremendous amount of intensity is happening, but the awareness is there. You are aware that the intensity is there. That does not give you any power to manipulate it. Mm -hmm. And this is where the teaching comes. This is the beauty of it is most spiritual seekers they believe that if they get to this level of where you're at they should have the power or the know-how to manipulate what is happening in general in general okay and i'm not saying you do that but i'm just saying generally and the mind will come and say that you've been trained enough you're advanced enough you're good enough you've done enough meditations you've been with enough gurus and teachers that by now you shouldn't be going through what you're going through now what i want to point out to that it is much bigger it we can call it the boss existence the big kahuna the spirit um, that it's much bigger than any of these things it will do what it wants to do and when and this is where this is this is where i would say you're in a beautiful place it's an amazing place right now, even though it doesn't seem like it or it doesn't feel like it naturally because it's painful and it's intense, it's confusing, and it's just you feel like you're being ripped apart. But there is definitely some pearls right in the middle of this to to receive. And and The teaching here is the recognition of that which is that force, that higher self, that part is how enormous it is, how big it is, its power, its presence that is capable of doing what it's doing. And in that recognition of it, in that very moment, that the, the awareness is here, that no matter what is going on, no matter how big of a storm is happening, how powerful it is, no matter how much it's tearing me from inside out, as if I feel like I'm being gutted, is that it does not touch the power of awareness no matter how powerful it is how much of a strong powerful storm it is is giving you this opportunity for this recognition that that not for one moment your power of awareness has been changed touched It has the circumstances, the events of existence, of what is going on, has no power on your power of awareness. You are still aware. You have no power over your emotions, your body, your senses. Maybe you want to hide out. You don't want to be around people. You don't want to listen to any spiritual teachings. You don't want to talk to any of your friends. You don't want to hear them giving you any raps. Everything may be painful. No one can understand. Or you just want to hide out. And you may be doing it for weeks. You may not, don't want to even get out of the house. But... 
it doesn't matter what the body, mind, the emotions, the senses are going to be doing. They're just an, under a tremendous amount of pressure. But none of this pressure has any power to touch your power of awareness. You are still aware. Yes, and thank you for the opportunity that I could share that with all of you today because usually I keep hiding. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. So, and it was, I guess, good for me. I, I mean, I was happy that I could join <laughs> today. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy you did. I'm really happy you did. So if you just right now in this moment come, come to this place, because this is a beautiful moment we have together. And we are here right now and you're, cap you're seeing what's going on. You're aware of what is happening to your nervous system. How any of it can touch your ability to be aware. Nothing. Nothing. The ability to be aware in the midst of this storm, this fire that is burning through, ripping things apart, destroying everything. How can it touch my ability to be aware? <laughs> that is an indication of a multidimensional being the capability of still being aware. Now one thing that cannot change, it cannot be taken away from you or it cannot be added to. So this fire, this intensity is definitely burning illusions, ideas of how things should be, how I should be, I shouldn't be going through this. This should not be happening to me. This should not be happening to my nervous system. This should not be happening to my body. All the ideas we have of our definition of an advanced spiritual being. So you come back to the heart of awareness, the very center, and you will see that nothing has the power to touch it. Because that's the one non-changing truth of your life, of your existence.
the very present. which is here and it's not conditional. No matter what happens. Even when Kali comes to your life and is determined to cut your head to rip you apart and burn you and tear, tear you into pieces and is doing it. But it can't touch one thing. One thing doesn't get touched. The very fact that I am you are, you are here, and you're aware, you're aware of all these things, very painful, or very joyful. We don't pay attention so much to it when we're going through joy, but it grabs us when we're going through pain. But the knowing doesn't change. I know, I'm aware. Well, it's good to see you all, and uh, <clears throat> thank you for joining me at this academy. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who are uh, sharing different platforms and uh, joining me today at the academy, uh, you always can contact me and uh, reach out through our new email address is info at zaratustra.tv, info at zaratustra.tv. My website is zaratustra.tv. You can always reach out to us via Facebook or Instagram. It's zaratustra5d is our address, as well as my YouTube channel. Um, for a detailed list of my upcoming events in Europe, please refer to my website again. Uh, I will be traveling to four countries in Europe, uh, starting with Poland, uh, Germany, Norway, and Sweden. And that's, the tour is going to start as of um, October 8th. And uh, I will be ending at around, I think, think it's going to be November 10th. So um, 
I hope we have a chance to see each other if you happen to be in Europe. Um, the next academy is going to be next weekend, uh, next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> next weekend. Uh, so feel free to to join me. I look forward to seeing you. Um, let me check to see if a few questions came in. Um, okay, well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for the input. Okay, nice seeing you all. I look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, God bless.